Hello friends. I today we are going to discuss on the topic membrane transfer proteins in plants. I Dr. Abhimanyu Maheshwari working as assistant professor in department of botany Bajaj College of Science Varda will be putting light on this topic. <coughs> the selective movement and the redistribution of ions and small organic molecules is essential for plant growth and cellular homeostasis. Because of this, plants have evolved numerous proteins that facilitate the transport of minerals, sugars, metabolites and other compounds through the limiting membranes of cells and organelles. These membranes transporters are selective for the compound being transported and the activities are often tightly regulated. Membrane transporters are usually members of multi-gene families that show developmental and tissue specific expressions. How the activities of individual transports are coordinated at the cell or tissue level is only a beginning to be understood. It's a very vast topic to be covered and yet to be discovered. Now, a membrane transport protein or simply a transporter is a membrane protein obviously involved in the movement of ions small molecules and macromolecules for example it may be a protein to be passed from across the biological membrane transport proteins are integral <coughs> transmembrane protein that is they exist permanently within and span the membrane across which they support substances the proteins may assist in the movement of substances by facilitated diffusion or active transport. The two main types of proteins involved in such transports are broadly categorized as either channels or carriers. Yet other two types are also classified which are we are going to see further. Collectively, membrane transporters and channels are transportome. Transportomes govern cellular influx and efflux of not only ions and nutrients but drugs as well. Now, one of the earliest events in the evolution of life was the development of a barrier between a sensitive biochemical machinery of replication and the dispersive forces of the outside world. This barrier is the cell membrane. Delimited by its membrane, the cell can support metabolic, reproductive and developmental activities that requires a stable physiochemical environment. The hydrophobic nature of the lipid bilayer ensures that hydrophilic compounds including most metabolites can be sequestered on one side of the membrane of the other. During the 1930s, the Finnish plant biologist Runar Kolander established that the ability of molecules to permeate plant cell membranes correlates directly with their oil is to water partition coefficient. The evolution of eukaryotes, concomitant with the development of an endonuclear system, allowed this the homeostatic function of membranes to be carried one step further. The compartmentalization of solutes within membrane bound organelles not only concentrates reactants and catalysts but also segregates incompatible processes. Plant cells contain many specialized organelles responsible for diverse biosynthetic, catabolic, and storage functions. This division of labor facilitates metabolic flexibility and efficiency. Now, this membrane transport underlies many essential cell biological processes. The complete sequence <coughs> of a yeast genome reveals that about 2000 to of the 6000 genes encode proteins associated with membranes of which a large proportion are transport system components. In plant cells, membrane transport undermine a wide range of essential proteases that includes Targar generation. Now, this Targar generation, 
the presence of a cell wall in the vast majority of plant cells enables them to generate agar pressure the cell wall provides structural rigidity allowing the cell to survive in dilute media without bursting Targar generation is accomplished by accumulation of the salts. In the mature cells of most plants, potassium ion accumulates in the cytoplasm and in large central matrix. Whereas in halophytes, the principal cation is usually the sodium ion. Cations must be balanced by a corresponding concentration of ions to achieve electroneutrality. In the vacuum. thus the principal anion is usually chloride ion the next function of membrane transport is the nutrient acquisition dissimilar to animals plants synthesize organic biomolecules from the organic nutrients now the many of these essential elements must be absorbed from the soil by roots for assimilation into amino acids and other metals thus the nitrogen can be absorbed as nh4 positive or no3 negative phosphorus is absorbed as h2po4 negative whereas sulfur as so4 negative numerous trace elements such as boron zinc copper iron etc are absorbed in inorganic transport system and absorbed always in inorganic form another function of the membrane transport is waste product excretion metabolism inevitably generates waste products that must be removed from the cytosol in the most nutritional conditions the principal by product is h positive ion although oh negative products can dominate in plants that assimilate carbonate and nitrate into organic compounds now to expel h positive from the cytosol plants have evolved a proton pumps at both the vacuolar and the plasma level another one is the metabolite distribution in terrestrial plants developing or heterotrophic tissues require reduced carbon and other metabolites to be supplied by autotrophic tissues long distance transport from source tissues to sinks is accomplished by the phloem sucrose and amino acids cross the membranes of companion cells and are loaded into the phloem by way of specific transport systems the membrane transport also uh, provides the compartmentalization of the metabolites the mini metabolic pathways present within a plant cell the compartmentalization of enzymes and metabolites prevents futile cycle one of the classic example relates to starch synthesis within the amyloplasm the starch can be synthesized and stored even by the glycolysis process in the cytosol starch synthesis depends on importing glucose 6 phosphate across the double membrane of the amyloplast now due to compartmentalization it enhances the metabolic efficiency in the mitochondrial matrix another function is the energy transduction <clears throat> membrane transport lies at the heart of the conversion of free energy into biologically useful form light energy stimulates the photosynthetic electron transport chain to form h positive into the thalloid lumen similarly oxidation of nadh provides the energy for pumping of h positive ion from the mitochondrial matrix into the intermembrane space in each of these cases the spontaneous exothermic flow of h positive back across the membrane is used to generate it understanding the mechanisms by which light and high energy electrons are harnessed to phosphorylate adp therefore demands knowledge of membrane transport the membrane transport also facilitates signal transduction many biotic and abiotic signals for plant growth and development trigger their respective responses by transiently increasing the concentration of cytosolic free calcium diapositive or ca diapositive
which is accomplished through the activities of two kinds of transport system. First, CDI positive translocating antipathies remove CDI positive from the membrane and intracellular membrane. Secondly, CDI positive permeable channels open in response to particular stimuli and allow the passive entry of CDI positive into the cytosol, thereby propagating the signal. Now, the membrane transport is generally <coughs> done by four of the broadly classified membrane proteins, which is first of the POPs. Protons constitute one of the major energy currencies of the plant cell on a par with NADPH and ATP. At the inner mitochondrial membrane and at the thylakoid membrane, a transmembrane H positive potential is generated and used to energize the synthesis of ATP. At all other membranes in cell, H positive pumps hydrolyze ATP to power the transport of protons but of the cytosol. Establishing electrochemical potentials across these membranes as well. The resulting transmembrane H positive potentials are then used to power the transport of other ions and solutes across the membrane. The net direction of transport across a membrane is dictated by the driving force of the transport system. The driving forces can be quantified in the terms of free energy relationship inherent in transport, transmembrane solute potentials. The magnitude of a transmembrane potential for an uncharged solute for an ion in the units of free energy is normally associated with scalar length. For an ion bearing a net charge, two factors contribute to the overall driving force. The concentration difference across the membrane and the membrane electrical potential. Another is the carrier force. Now the transport system that couple the downhill exergonic flow of ions such as H positive or Na positive to the uphill exergonic flow of inorganic ions and solute are called as carriers. The carriers that catalyze solute flux in the same direction H, H positive or N positive flux are known as supporters. Because of proton flow passively across the most membranes in the direction of the cytosol, symporters typically energize uptake of solute into the cytosol, either from the external medium or from intracellular compartments. Opposite to that, excretion from the cytosol can be accomplished by antiporter, which exchange solutes for protons. Antiporters. Uh, the antiporters are present at the plasma membrane and at the endomembrane. Both symporters and antiporters tend to dissipate the proton motive force, and this energy is conserved in the form of electrochemical potential for particular solutes. Ion channels or the channel proteins are ubiquitous in biological medicine. Several classes of ion channels have been described in plant systems including those specific for potassium, calcium, and anions. The net direction of ion flux through a channel is determined solely by the electrochemical driving force acting on that ion. In contrast to the operation of symporters and antiporters, the proton motive force plays no direction role in driving the passage of ions through channels. Water is a major entity in a cell and to facilitate its transport, plant membranes have aquaporins in them. 
let us discuss in more detail about all these membrane transport The transport of solutes or the air or the substances across the membrane can play take place by simple diffusion, which occurs mainly through channel fluids and carrier fluids, which is a type of passive transport in which the transport is in the direction of electrochemical gradient and no extra energy is required to do it. Whereas through pump the transport occurs against the direction of electrochemical gradient and that's why it requires energy so it is called as active transport but these <coughs> in the diagram you can see uniport symport and antiport and uniport are generally channels symport and antiport are the carriers the channels may be voltage gated or they may be ligand gated. Let's talk about the pumps. The proton pumping antiphases known as the F-type antiphases are found in plants at the inner mitochondrial and thylakoid membrane that synthesize ATP. These two kinds of membranes contain proton pumping electron transport chains driven by redox potential and light energy respectively. The proton motive force established by the electron transport chain serves to drive the H positive flow back through the F type ATPs, thereby resulting in ATP synthesis. One sector of F type ATPs called F0 in plant mitochondria and CF0 in plant chloroplast traverses the membrane and forms an H positive permeable conduit. The other sector of the enzyme called F1 in mitochondria and CF1 in chloroplast readily dissociates from the transmembrane sector, contains adenine nucleotide binding sites and can hydrolyze ATP. The flow of H positive to F0 drives a long range conformational transitions in the F1 that result in the synthesis. The crystallographic studies the crystallographic studies of F1 sector that alpha 3, beta 3 and gamma complex from bovine mitochondria perform, was performed by John Walker. He demonstrated that three adenine nucleotide binding sites of the complex located primarily on the beta on the three beta subunits show three distinct conformations. At any given time, one binding site is an open conformation, another is binding a nucleotide loosely, that is loose site, and the third is the binding a nucleotide tightly. Thus, these studies lend structural support to the conformational model for proton-driven ATP synthesis, which was postulated by Paul Boyer. Now, that postulates that ATP is synthesized by F-type ATPases through a process, a rotational catalysis. According to conformational model, ADP and inorganic phosphate first bind to the open nucleotide binding sites. Proton flow through the F0 sector of the enzyme causes the central F1 subunit that is your gamma subunit to rotate, altering the conformation of all three nucleotide binding sites. The tight binding site opens and releases ATP into the aqueous medium. The open site is converted to a loose site and the loose binding site forms a tight pocket in which ATP is formed spontaneously. In net terms, a total of three or perhaps four protons are admitted through the F0 sector for each ATP synthesis.
let's talk about the carrier proteins unlike pumps the carriers do not catalyze scalar reactions such as atp hydrolysis in other words the transport process does not involve chemical modification of any of the compounds bound to the carrier rather carriers catalyze solely pectoral reactions that is the movement of inorganic ions and simple organic solutes across the membrane one defining feature of carriers is that they display saturability when the kinetics of a transport are expressed relatively to the substrate concentration frequently these kinetics can be expressed in terms of the michaelis menten equation yielding a km for the substrate and a half v max for the transport the array of ions and solutes translocated by carriers is vast the principal inorganic nutrients including are nh4 positive no3 negative organic phosphate that is h2po4 negative k positive and so4 negative are all translocated into cells by plasma membrane carriers carriers also are responsible for taking up ions that play less central roles in metabolism such as thiolene among the organic solutes translocated into cell by carriers are the fundamental building blocks of the biopolymers sugars amino acids purines and pyrimidine bases at the plasma membrane carriers not only are central to nutrient absorption from the soil but also play fundamental roles in the mobilization and storage of metabolites carriers also play crucial role in endomembrane The tonoplast carries catalyzed sequestration of Na positive, C C di positive, Mg di positive, and NO3 negative, as well as sucrose and amino acids. At other organelles, metabolite exchange often predominates. Carriers are very difficult to identify biological approaches because they are not typically abundant and do not execute reactions that can be assayed. without reconstitution in membranes the next we have to discuss is the ion channels now these ion channels are ubiquitous in plant membranes during their classic studies on the squid axons in the early 1950s Alan Hodgkin and Huxley coined the term channel to describe the elements in the plasma membrane that responded to electrical stimuli by opening and facilitating selective fluxes of ions during the action potential. These action potentials are generated when the membrane is depolarized to a voltage value more positive than the threshold voltage. A substantial further depolarization then follows. but this is transient and vmax returns spontaneously to its negative resting potential a few terrestrial plant cells also are excitable especially those exhibiting rapid mobility in the sensitive plant that is your mimosa pudica this stroking evokes an action potential that causes the pulvinus a hinge region at the base of the leaf to lose turgor and collapse the leaf the insectivorous plants that is sundews and drosera also use action potential to couple sensitively the sensing of prey to subsequently fluorescence these rather specialized examples might well implicate that the distribution and roles of plant channel are rather restricted in the despite extensive speculation only a little is known about plant ion channel the development of new technologies for the neurophysiological investigation and the application of these methods 
to plant stains has now demonstrated the presence of Ayanchenas in a non-excitable plant cell too. The guard cell ion channels will determine and play a key role in mediating the pseudostructures that accompany stomatal opening and closure. The channels are now known to be present in all plant cell types at the vacuolar and plasma membrane and probably at all other membranes as well. Now, these ions show or exhibit ionic selectivity. Ion channels display selectivity for their ionic substrates. Now, most of the ion channels in plant cells usually discriminate in favor of either cations or anions. The cation channels can be further subdivided into those that select a positive over other monovalent cations, those that are relatively non-selective among the non-covalent cations, and those that are selective for C diapositive ions. The most plasma membranes and ion channels allow permeation of wide range of anions, including Cl negative ion, Na positive ion, K positive ion, NO3 negative ion, and organic acids. Other anion channels in vacuolar membranes select specifically for nitro. We have emphasized that ion fluxes through channels are monitored by electrical currents. However, currents themselves provide no information on which ions are flowing. The ion channels are gated often by voltage or ligands through changes in open state probability. Although channel conformation is not altered as part of the ion translocation reaction, channels are nevertheless tightly controlled by conformational shifts between permeable or open and non-permeable that is closed states. In other words, to submit or to permit the catalysis of ion bonding, the channel must was switch into its open state. The switching between open and closed states is what gives rise to the discrete transition in current shown in single channel recording. This alteration between the open and closed states known is gating. In nearly all channels, gating is controlled by membrane voltage, a ligand or both. When gating factor activates a channel, the equilibrium of the reaction shifts from closed channel to open channel. The contribution of an individual type of channel to whole cell or whole vacuole currents is the ionic current across the whole cell or vacuole. Thus, ion channels play a key role in the transport of the channel or the ions in all the membrane transport. Speaking about the ion channels <coughs> are specific for particular ion, so due to their conformation. One of the specialized ion channel is your acroponics. So most biologists have at some time or another observed the simple effects of hyperosmotic treatment of plant tissue. Tissue becomes less rich at the cellular level plasmolysis of it. The rapidity of plasmolysis bears testimony to the higher degree of permeability biological membranes exhibit towards it. Two forces acting on water determine the directionality of water flow through the plasma hydrostatic pressure difference across the plasma membrane or the cell wall complex and the osmotic pressure difference between the inside and outside of it. The flux of water across is proportional to the driving force. 
that the constant of proportionality is permeability of the membrane to water. The membrane permeability to water is measured essentially in either of the two ways. The first approach In the first approach, a position of an osmotic or hydrostatic pressure difference across the membrane can be used to generate a water technique used for such measurements. Whereas, a second approach to assessing water permeability lies on measuring the diffusion permeability of the astrophic water. Now, the aquaporins are the members of major intrinsic protein family which can form water channels when expressed in hydrocarbon system. The molecular, biological and biochemical studies have confirmed the presence of water channels in plants. And these water channels or aquaporins are highly expressed in plant membranes such that they are easily visualized in membrane preparations examined by SGS Roach. These plasma membrane aquaporins play a role in facilitating transcellular water. The prominence of aquaporins of a protein level alone provokes the question of why the vacuolar and plasma membranes of plants possess water channels. Now the water can permeate the membrane lipid at relatively high rates. Now, one answer might lie in the requirement of a low resistance pathway for water flow to cells in conditions of high transpiration of protein. Thus, although the xylem presents an ineffective low resistance pathway for water transport from root to shoot, the path of water to the xylem is likely to involve at least one transcellular step, that is, to the endoderm facilitating symplastic transfer of water through other cell types in the root and leaf has the potential to increase the transpiration rates beyond those possible simply through the apoplastic rate. Furthermore, if water transport can be directed principally through aquaporins, the plant has more control over resistance to root to leaf water movement than would be possible if the principal pathways were solely the apoplast and lipid bilayer component of the membranes. Let's summarize what we have discussed in this session. The membrane transport plays a fundamental role in many biological processes in plant cells, including generation of cell targa, energy and signal transaction, nutrient acquisition, waste product excretion, and metabolite distribution, as well compartmental activity. Four, four fundamental classes of transport systems are present at all membrane. Pumps catalyze transport of ions or complex organic molecules against their thermodynamic grid. At membranes, other than ATP synthesizing membranes of mitochondrial chloroplasts, pumps are generally driven by ATP hydrogen. At all membranes, H-positive pumps dominate the transport characteristics, removing H positive from the cytosol and generating a proton motive force across each membrane. Carriers translocate a wide range of simple solutes including ions, sugars and amino acids. Carriers are distinguished from pumps by not executing scalar reactions such as ATP hydrolysis. Solute transport through carriers is generally energized through coupling of proton motive force driven H positive transport to the uphill flow of the solute. Ion channels are purely dissipative with respect to the catalysis of transport and operate at very high turnover rates. The next, the channels, they get between open and closed states and gating is frequently controlled either by membrane voltage or by a ligand, depending on the function of the channel. Channels that are highly selective for 
K positive and CAD positive residue reside in the macular and plasma membranes. The less selective cation and anion channels also are present in both membranes, as are the malate selective channels in the chromoplast. Aquaporins facilitate rapid transport of water across the plasma membrane and chromoplast, bypassing an alternative pathway for water transport that involves permeation through the liquid plasma. The all classes of transport system have been identified at a molecular level. In many cases, structural aspects of the transport system can be related to solute permeation and to control of transport system activity. Thank you.